May the Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to Jerusalem Presbyterian Church on this 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm glad you're joining with us as we gather in the name of Christ our Lord, as we embrace the hope that Christ provides and the peace and call of God in our lives. I would like to remind you that we are celebrating the sacrament of communion in this service, so if you haven't gathered some bread or a cookie or a cracker or in some sort of juice or wine or other drink, feel free to pause this video and do so. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, we understand that to turn from you is to fall, but to turn towards you is to rise and to abide in you is to stand fast forever. Grant us your grace and blessing as we worship you this day. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. We begin this service by singing our opening hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God. Merciful God, we confess we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. We now offer a moment of silence as we each offer our own confession to you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. May the God of mercy, who forgives all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keeps us in eternal life. May the peace of Christ be with you. Please pass the peace in word or in spirit to your neighbor. Peace. Our first reading for today comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. This passage comes from a series of lessons that Jesus was teaching the crowd in the temple during the final week of his life before the crucifixion. Listen for God's word. The same day some Sadducees came to him, saying, There is no resurrection. 
and they asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses said, If a man dies childless, his brother shall marry the widow, and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers among us. The first married and died childless, leaving the widow to his brother. The second did the same. So also the third, down to the seventh. Last of all, the woman herself died. In the resurrection, then, whose wife of the seven will she be? For all of them have married her. Jesus answered them, You are wrong, because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like the angels in heaven. And as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was said to you by God? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. And when the crowd heard it, they were astounded at his teaching. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This is the word of the Lord. So today our mystery box is brought to us from the Parsons family. Let's take a look. Hi, this week's mystery box is a candlestick. Okay, so he says the mystery box is a candlestick. Okay, it's a candlestick, but it's not a candlestick holder. That's why I was a little confused. It's actually a candle. Well, when I think of candles, of course, I, I always think of church, you know. Right now we have still the two candles lit on the communion table. Uh, and candles are, are always an image of light, right? So we use candles on Christmas Eve, and we use candles on Monday, Thursday. And they are a reminder of the light in our world. And that light comes from our God. Uh, while I've been saying this, I've, I've thought of the uh, old Mennonite idea that each of us has the light of God within us. Each of us, if, if we can focus on that, we see the light of God in our lives. And we can live as better people for it. So, as you hold up that beautiful golden candle, I think, let your light shine. Show the light of God uh, each day in, in every conversation we have. And whether that's on the ball field, or whether that's in the classroom, or whether that's at the grocery store, or wherever we go, we carry the light of God with us. That's what I have for the mystery box today. Let us pray. Great Lord, open our hearts to the word you have for us today. Allow it to move within us, allow it to grow and to guide us. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our second reading comes once again from the book of Exodus, from the 20th chapter. We're still focusing on the Ten Commandments. We have this week, and then our final time talking about them will be in two weeks. But listen for God's word. Then God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. For the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. 
You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Have you ever heard of Occam's razor? It's also called the law of parsimony or parsimony. When solving a problem, Occam's razor says the least complex answer is usually right. Simple is usually more often than something weirdly complex. It isn't always true, but it usually gets the job done. Why make things overly complex if something is obvious? That's Occam's razor. So what is a sermon? A sermon or a homily or a meditation or a reflection in the church world, it always begins with scripture. If it doesn't look at scripture, then it's not a sermon. Because a sermon fundamentally is interpreting scripture. We believe scripture, the Old and New Testaments, are the revelation of God, yes, and we also say it's the living word. What that means is that interpretation changes through time, through, gen through the generations. A sermon preached 50 years ago may still be relevant in our world, but it may not be because we're different. And thus we interpret things differently. And so a sermon is an interpretation of scripture. And one of the age old rules of interpreting scripture is that we look at the more complex scriptures through the lens of simpler ones, not vice versa. We don't take something simple and see how complex we can make it. We're trying to clarify, not muddy the waters of scripture. So what does that have to do with our scripture for today? <clears throat> we're still in the Ten Commandments, and this week we're looking at the four don'ts. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not covet your neighbors, fill in the blank. Pretty straightforward. The scripture Chris read with the great commandment is also straightforward. Love God. Love your neighbor. What interpretation is actually needed? Don't hurt others. Don't steal from them. Don't be unfaithful to those you love. Don't have an unhealthy fixation on what's not yours. Love God by loving those around you. What else needs to be said? So we come to our time of sharing our joys and our concerns. Uh, I just got off the phone with Bev Wilkie a, a couple minutes ago. She's home recovering from her surgery. The surgery went well. Uh, they still have one of their sons checking in on them each day, though, um, just, just to make sure that things are, are recovering smoothly. So we also lift up Bill Bailey in prayer and Patty as he's still recovering at home from his surgery. Uh, and we know that that's just going to be a really long road. So we, we lift them up in prayer and we lift up Rich Savoy. Uh, we lift up Rich uh, with his um, surgery for his back coming up soon. So other things to lift up in prayer, we lift up Maryland's list. And, and uh, this 4th of July weekend, we lift up our country. So let us offer our prayers to God. Let us pray. Wonderful and merciful God, we pray to you. We pray the things that I've spoken out loud, so we pray for Rich, and we pray for Bill and Patty, and we pray prayers of gratitude for Bev's successful surgery. We pray for all those who are battling cancer, for Marilyn's whole list, for those who are also uh, walking with their loved ones battling cancer, we pray for them. We pray this day also for our country. 
We pray for those who are marginalized, and we pray also that your peace may come over us, that we may understand each other better, that we may understand the lives and the journeys of all Americans better. We pray for the, for the day to come where we have ended white supremacy. We pray this day for our church, for all churches around us, for all who call on your name, for those who are carrying your hands into this world. We pray this day for not just what I've said out loud, but the prayers that are deepest within our hearts. We pray all of this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother and Father of us all. Amen. And now we come to our time of celebrating the Lord's Supper. As we prepare for it, let us sing, let us ta our talents and tongues employ. So we come to our Lord's table. Scripture tells us that at the end of days they shall come from north and south, east and west, and sit at table with one another. I find that so comforting in this time when we are scattered apart, that the bread that we share and, and the juice that we share today, we are sharing through the camera to each other, that we are the community gathered together even if we're apart. So all are welcome here, all are welcome at Christ's table. All who take Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior are welcome here. Let us pray. Giving and forgiving God, we offer our prayer to you. We are grateful for this time at table, for the being able to share these elements. We're grateful for the gift of Jesus Christ, who came down in the incarnation, who taught and preached and who befriended all peoples. We are grateful for his sacrifice on the cross and for the gift of the resurrection and the empty tomb. We are grateful that he is still a friend to all peoples. We ask for these simple gifts to be blessed by your Holy Spirit, that the, the, that the bread we break may be your body and the cup that we share may be your blood, but even more so that these things may be holy and acceptable to you, and that by partaking these things, we also may be holy and acceptable to you. We pray all of this in the powerful name of Jesus, who taught disciples to, of all nations to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. And so we tell the story that on the night that our Lord was betrayed, he took a common loaf of bread, and having given thanks, he broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, our Lord took a common cup and said, This is the new covenant shed by my very own blood. So this day, as we eat this bread and as we drink this cup, we proclaim our Lord's dying and rising and living until he comes again in glory. Amen. We now partake. And so this is the body of Christ, broken for us. And the blood of Christ shed for us. Let us pray. Great God, seal this sacrament, sacrament upon our hearts. Allow it to guide us, to strengthen us, to empower us living into the future that you have called us towards. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. A couple announcements to round out this service. The first thing is that Laura is on vacation this week, and I'm beginning vacation starting on Wednesday, so or on Thursday, so all the church offices close the whole week. Uh, for the week after that, if you are in need uh, of pastoral emergency, please call me or text me on my cell. Also, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the JPC YouTube channel. Uh, we're still needing to get to 100 people so we can unlock some of the things we need to do. Uh, and finally, next Sunday, Elaine Stover will be offering the sermon, uh, and Becky Gapinski will be doing the prayers of the people. So if you have a prayer request, please send it to Becky by noon on Friday. You can either call her or email her, uh, and she will mention it in worship. With all that being said, receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and all those whom you love and all those whom God calls you to love. From now until our Lord comes again in glory. Amen. <laughs>